Hey everyone, I'm Kazue McGregor, Los Angeles Philharmonic Librarian, and I'm very happy that you can join me today. I want to thank MOLA for this opportunity to connect with you in this very unusual, crazy pandemic time. I'm going to speak today about speaking in public and giving library tours, because as much as you and I might prefer to keep working in the library out of the limelight, we are often asked to present tours and, and give an insight into what we do. So if I can share with you just a little bit, I would be grateful. I will say that for public speaking, there are wonderful tools out there. Uh, you can check Toastmasters and other public speaking tips and tools that you'll find on the internet easily. So I'm not really going to dwell too much on the aspect of how to speak in public. I um, have to say that naturally, I, I am a shy person, so it's usually because I feel a responsibility or a duty to represent my organization that I will go and speak in front of an audience. But if I had a choice, I would be more than happy to decline. Having said that, I think librarians are in a unique position to give a special perspective about their orchestra, operas, ballets, and conservatories that <clears throat> typically an audience member may never have an opportunity to see. And by giving them that chance to connect and to learn, they may feel that special connection strengthened. So the way I have always approached speaking to an audience is that I am representing my organization. And if they walk away feeling that they love the organization more, or feel a stronger connection because of my presentation, then I feel like I've done my job. So I wanna talk about how to prepare for whatever presentation you're going to be doing. I think it's very important, and you guys are really great as librarians, to prepare ahead of time. You really need to know your audience. You really need to speak to the host and find out the exact parameters. What do they want to hear? How long should my talk be? And I think those um, important guidelines will inform how the rest of your talk will go. I always like to also think, what impression do I want the listeners to leave with? And so from that perspective, then it's not just what you say, but how you look, how the staging looks, the presentation, because that will remain far longer than what you might have, have said. That being said, I think it's always good to prepare anecdotes and things that they can take home to um, retell on their own. So that makes them even uh, feel connected. So let me now talk about a little bit of the specifics of setting for a library tour and how we do it in the LA Phil. So I think when a library tour is requested, we ask for the number in the party. And if it is a small enough party, I always like to start out by asking for their names. And I think it just kind of makes them feel welcomed and it's a very personal, personal effect. I also ask them what questions they might have. So not necessarily answering those questions at the beginning of the tour, but just jotting them down and assuring them that I'm going to do my best to cover those questions during my talk. And if there were any questions that I couldn't get to, then I'll be sure to get back to them. But that way it also gives me a chance to gauge the level of interest and the level of background. And that definitely informs my talk. So I guess, I guess the way I approach it is I don't want to have a set um, routine because every group is different and I want to treat them as such. So you wanna set the tone that you are there for them. How do I do that? So once they come in to the library or into the room where you're going to be speaking, then I am going to um, have handouts. 
that they would not have gotten anywhere else. So season brochures are okay, but I stopped doing that years ago just because I knew that they would be getting it from other places, especially if they're already patrons. What we do have and what we might think in the library as simply ordinary can be very fascinating. For example, a sample of our paper. And sometimes I even cut it so that they can take it home as notepads or something, you know, staple it together. But that's something for them to, to understand and feel that it goes down to even that level. I have also put out instrumentation sheets, which even to an average staff person, not familiar with layouts and stage plots, is a kind of like Morse code. So if I can explain to them what those numbers mean, sometimes that makes them very excited. Like they have some knowledge that the regular patrons may not have. And I think that that is also kind of special for them. Um, speaking of stage plots, I do often share stage plots. And finally, an errata list, but not overdoing it, but an example of an errata list with, with the actual parts that have been fixed by comparison, heightens their appreciation for what the library does. Oftentimes, as you probably have heard yourselves, they think that the library um, is responsible for simply bringing out the scores and parts on stage. And I always tell them that is the easiest part of our job. And quite frankly with you, I have to say that even to this day, until the downbeat happens, I still hover backstage. I don't think that nervousness ever, ever leaves. I also put out MOLA publications. And they're, they're really cool. I, I think that when they realize that there is an official professional organization that unites all the or performance librarians, it gives them a deeper appreciation for our jobs. And um, again, by doing something like that, it brings back an appreciation for your organization that they might not have had before. Um, I like to make guests feel that that was an exclusive opportunity without overloading them with a, a lecture of some sorts. So my impression that they, I want them to take away again is just a renewed appreciation for the level of professionalism that exists within the LA Phil, within your organization. Okay, so what happens then if um, not just the regular patron comes in, but you have a professional group. Let's say they are fellow librarians, but of the MLA, that's Music Librarians Association, or perhaps they are composers from the local university. Then I think you're talking about a completely different level of preparation. And I have in the past prepared um, a lot more specifics. So in addition to the things I mentioned above, such as uh, bowed parts, errata fixes, I might show the comparisons of different editions, small conductor, I'm sorry, small tools and equipment, and conductors mark scores. Of course, uh, that could continue endlessly <laughs> if they are a group of composers, so um, you will want to pre-select those scores and just have the other ones uh, not visible, hint. Okay. Um, the pre and post proved parts are really something that um, for those who appreciate sheet music and music in general is something that comes as a surprise for most. So if you have a great example of that, um, by all means, share that. Um, again, whether it's a composer's group or not, I try to jot down their questions beforehand. And um, that definitely tells me the tone and style that I want to have during the talk. 
So in summary, public speaking is a performance and just like a performance, you have to practice. And substituting for practice, just kind of thrown into the water and you learn as you do. So again, know your audience beforehand. Prepare stories or anecdotes as easy examples that they can re repeat back when they get back to their friends. Ask the host the desired length and topic area specifics. So don't fall into a routine. Prepare handouts or some tactile visuals whenever possible. It really makes a wonderful memento of their day. Think about the staging and the visual impressions you want them to leave with, including level of appropriate neatness, dress, and overall tone. You know, we all have our own styles and, um, and I think that's great. Be yourself. But in general, I would advise keeping it simple and engaging in a way that they feel you are there for them. It's not just about the library. It is about sharing our knowledge so that they feel connected and affirming why they want to support your organization. So on that note, have a wonderful day.